All right, so you've got your Korg Prolog unboxed, unpacked, and you're ready to make sound. The first thing you're going to want to do is plug in the AC power cable. Once that's plugged in, you'll then want to connect your Prolog to your sound producing device, whether that is an amp or a set of speakers or a PA system. You'll want to use the outputs on the left side there. The Prolog has a stereo output, but you can also use just the left side for mono if you want. You can also use a set of headphones. The headphone jack is right next to the stereo output. Once you've got it plugged in, make sure your master volume is turned all the way down. And then make sure the volume of your mixer or PA system or amp is turned all the way down. You'll then want to turn on your synth. The power switch is right in the back by the power cable. When you turn it on, you'll notice it goes through a tuning algorithm. So right now, the Prolog is tuning itself. Analog synthesizers have physical oscillators inside that need to be tuned due to the changes in the environment. Just like any other instrument, like a guitar or a piano, these oscillators can react to humidity changes, they can react to temperature changes, they can react to all sorts of different things. Back in the day, you used to have to tune it yourself manually. But now, fortunately, the Prolog has a great tuning system that it'll just do it for you automatically. And 99% of the time, you won't have to do anything. Of course, you can go into the settings and tweak some stuff if you have to do something manually. But most of the time, once you've taken your Prolog to a new environment, out to a gig or a new recording studio, you let it sit a bit, turn it on, it will automatically detect any changes and tune itself. Now, once you've got that set, you're going to want to turn your amp up a little or turn your speakers up a little bit. And you can play a chord or a couple of notes or even a single note and slowly turn up the master volume. The Prologue has a built-in mini oscilloscope right here. So that's a really great indication. And I kind of wish that all keyboards had that because you can tell if sound should be coming out. It's almost like using a VU meter. So when I play... I can tell that something is happening. There's a wave shape happening, and I should be hearing something. So it's kind of like a little check and balance for you to make sure that things are going the way they should be. And that's it. You've got your Prolog plugged in, and you're ready to roll. There's a couple of other ports on the back of the Prolog. First of all, we've got a sync in and out, and you'll notice it uses a little eighth-inch mini cable, and this is great for hooking your Prolog up to a Volca synth. So you can synchronize your Prolog with your Volca series synths and really expand the functionality of both in that regard. I've got a MIDI in and out. I'd use the MIDI in if I wanted to hook up, say, an 88 key keyboard to my Korg Prolog so that I could really play the span of notes that I would want to. Or vice versa, you can use the MIDI out so that when you're playing your Prolog synth, it's actually controlling another synth as well if you want to make some cool big fat layers. I've got a damper and expression pedal input as well. So I can use a sustain pedal and I can also use any sort of expression or control pedal that will allow me to control not just, you know, cutoff, but a whole bunch of different parameters on the synth. I've got a USB connection right here, and that's great for firmware updates, but it's also great for using it for MIDI in and out and also for sound managing. So the Prolog, you can manage sounds by adding custom oscillators. You don't have to use the oscillators that are built in. It has an SDK that allows users to create their own oscillators, and you can load them on over the USB connection. You can also manage your presets that way, too. So there's a really great preset manager program that we'll take a look at that will allow you to load up your oscillators and allow you to manage all your presets, get them in the order that you want to, and browse them, save them, back them up all that kind of stuff. So it's a very versatile synth, and I'm sure you're really excited to jump in and start programming it. So let's get going. 